Hello everyone, my name is Milda Kuretite and I am graphic designer and PhD student at the Faculty of Belas Arts University of Lisbon. Uh, and today I'm going to present you my research that is called Tracking Kinetic Typography that I'm doing under supervision of Professor Dr. Jorge dos Reis. And during this presentation, I am going to introduce you a term of kinetic typography as well a taxonomy of kinetic typography and uh, my experiment that used this taxonomy and, uh, and, and eye tracking system. Um, so first of all, I would like to speak about temporal typography. So all typography that is displayed on screen is called temporal typography. And typography on screen appeared together with the screen itself. However, soon enough, typography on screen started to move and got the term of kinetic typography. Researchers refer that Georges Millier was the first one to experiment with uh, kinetic typography um, by using stop motion technique. Um, and now that I already started to speak a bit about movement, I would like to introduce you a taxonomy of kinetic typography that was created by Barbara Brownie. So, uh, temporal typography, as you already know, is typography that is displayed on screen, and it has two categories serial presentation and kinetic typography. Serial presentation is typography that is displayed on screen but has no movement involved, while kinetic typography is typography that is displayed on screen and has a movement involved. Um, Barbara Brownie divided kinetic typography into global motion and local kineticism. I do believe this is a very important step in the, in the taxonomy as in in here, you need to identify where actually the movement is happening, if the movement is happening globally or it's more localized. So global motion, Barbara Brownie divided into scrolling typography that has subcategories of scrolling horizontal, scrolling vertical, or scrolling 3D effect uh, typography. Uh, dynamic layout, um, e Barbara Brownie identifies as a composition re that rearranges so that the distance between the words or letters changes. Uh, local kineticism, uh, Barbara Brownie divided into fluid typography and elastic typography. Elastic typography is typography that has a movement in letters outline, however, letter never breaks, so it always stays legible and readable. Uh, fluid typography is the most complex category of kinetic typography um, as, it has, as it is constructed in time. The fact that it is constructed in time leads to the fact that it has phases of illegibility and irreadability. Um, so, fluid typography has three subcategories, metamorphosis, construction and revelation. Metamorphosis, according to the, uh, Barbara Brownie, is a subcategory where letter forms are created by the reshaping of a form. In our experiment, we use the visually rec recognizable circles to bring more information on visual recognitions, and that actually led to the fact that circles were recognized before the letter itself. Um, Second subcategory of fluid typography is called construction. And it is uh, familiar to metamorphosis, but in construction, letters are constructed from abstract independent shapes. So we do not recognize it visually before. Um, Uh, and also what to say a bit more about construction, the fact that uh, you don't recognize a shape before you recognize the letter leads to a better visual letter recognition, better reading speed, and better comprehension. Uh, fluid typography as well has a subcategory of revelation, and it is slightly different as it, as it is a letter form or that is filled um, which is constructed with the filling uh, volume uh, technique. And in this particular example, we do see how the letters are, were, were filled from the bottom to the top. And that is not our natural reading path. That's why it also can cause some issues on reading process. 
Uh, I would like to also to mention that all these subcategories and categories can be mixed and matched, and sometimes it is really difficult to identify to which category it belongs, but I do believe it is useful and sometimes it is really needed. Um, now we already spoke a bit about uh, reading comprehension and uh, visual letter recognition. I would like to speak a bit more about legibility, and actually I would like to speak about legibility in kinetic typography as it is different. Uh, so first of all, I would like to speak about fluid typography as fluid typography officially has phases of illegibility, but I want to make a point that it does not mean that in general it is illegible. It is only a phase that has to finish in legible letter form. Um, the other subcategory that can cause certain issues is um, scrolling typography that is widely used. And um, it, it happens because many times the speed of scrolling typography is chosen not correctly. So it scrolls too fast and it creates some issues on legibility. So I'm going to show you a video where we will see scrolling horizontal typography and it will start fast then it will slow down and then it go, again will go fast and how, how it changes. Um, so, I would like to speak now about my experiment. So, I did experiment in psycholinguistic laboratory in Portugal using a night tracking system. And I analyzed the results of the experiment um, in research during my short scientific mission under supervision of Professor Dr. Anna Bessemans and Professor Dr. Eric Neutz. And, um, our research question was, what is the impact of different kinetic typography categories by means of typeface on attention duration measured as eye track fixation duration compared with the attention duration of serial presentation? So to say it a bit more simple, we compared every category of kinetic typography to serial presentation, static typography, and we compared its attention duration that we measured as an eye track, fix, uh, eye track uh, fixation duration that I'm going to explain in a few slides. But first of all, I also would like to speak about the design of the experiment. So there were seven categories of kinetic typography that were matched with seven controlled words. Um, in order not to have impact between the word match and the Category, uh, between the word and the category, we had two groups, group A and B, that saw different matches. Um, and yeah, an eye tracking system. So eye tracking system is a system that is already in use for around a century. However, it is still not very popular in typography, but very popular in uh, linguistics, in uh, psycholinguistic research, and even in user experience. But I do believe this technology can also bring a lot of information uh, about typography. Um, so I would like to introduce very quickly how eye tracking system works. So infrared light shines onto your face and reflects two parameters, retina reflection that helps to find the center of a pupil and then cornea reflection. Um, these two parameters point where you're actually looking at. Uh, the most important measurements of the eye tracking system is saccade and fixation. Um, saccade, we do see here as one, two, three, four. It's a circle, and it is a time, it is a point where we actually stop and we, we fixate and we process information. Also, um, fixation is referred as a tension point, and that was the main main measurement that we were following as we were following attention duration, so actually we were following fixation duration. And so these fixations um, joined with the saccade. And saccade is also so important in, uh, in order to understand how people read the text because it shows all the reading pattern. And um, it, is, it is not the time when we process information, but we can also see a lot of interesting things like, for example, if there is an issue of legibility in the text, we can recognize it by backward saccades that are also known as a regressions. Um, so I would like to also speak a bit about eye tracking data. And um, 
so there is uh, like when you work with the eye tracking, you collect a lot of data. And, um, and the most important is the raw data where you get the Excel file and you just analyze and you do your statistical analysis. Um, and it is the most scientific approach. However, um, I do think when you work with the typography that is such a visual, um, it is also important to see visualizations of the da data that sometimes scientists not looking at it that much. So I would like to present you a few visualizations of eye tracking system that are going to show the same data, but in just different way. So first of all, um, scan path you already going to be a bit familiar with it because it shows the fixations and saccades. So we are going to see a construction example and 15 participants watching it at the same time. We start seeing also very, why visualization is so important, I do believe, is because you can also raise certain questions. It can help you even sometimes maybe answer something. For example, in here we already see that there are much more fixations in the upper part than in the lower part of the world. And we see that some people fixated, like this, as when the circle is larger, it means that the fixation uh, duration was longer. So I do think this, is, um, this also can provide some new and interesting information. Um, the other visualization that you can also uh, extract from eye tracking system is a heat map. And heat map it was very important in our research as it shows duration of the fixation. So the areas that gets more red, it means that people were fixating there longer. And it is the same, the same data just before we saw it in the scan path and now we're seeing in heat map. So and in here we also see some interesting things that like letter C that was always legible and readable, uh, has almost no fixation duration, and the abstract shapes in the right corner has much more fixation duration, which is also interesting and can lead to some kind of ideas. Um, results. Um, so uh, the results of the experiment show that um, uh, subcategories of construction revelation and metamorphosis had significant difference compared with serial presentation um, according to the attention. And um, that is also what is also very important to understand that these three subcategories belong to the one category that is called fluid typography. So basically, fluid typography has very different um, reading and attention path than serial presentation. And currently I'm working on fluid typography and I'm trying to understand and apply it um, where fluid typography actually could be uh, more useful and what read, uh, reader it can fit better. And uh, so as I said, I am currently working on, the, on ADHD and trying to see if it can help uh, for people that has it and because it's, it, it is slightly familiar in terms of the attention uh, patterns. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you can contact me and follow me.